Hello and welcome to EVs and Beyond. I'm Rich Dibwoods and today I'm going to make a statement that a lot of our you driving friends out there may not like. New Zealand has not been built by utes. It's been built by vans. They deliver all that stuff that you buy online. They deliver your shopping. They take tools to site. Your house was probably built with stuff that arrived on site in a van. And they can be adapted to do so many things and that's what we're looking at today. What we have over here is a Ford e-Transit, the first electric van that Ford New Zealand has begun selling here, of many more to come, which we'll talk about soon. And it's been adapted to do some really cool work. So let's have a look at this vehicle and have a chat about what it takes to get one of these vehicles from a basic state to being ready for hard work. Here we have uh, Daniel Stanners from Auto Transform. Now, I've got a bit of a, a thought that I've posed at the start of this video. Vans really are New Zealand's proper workhorse, not utes. Is that fair, you think? Yeah, it's been a workhorse in New Zealand since I can ever remember, definitely for the last 30 years. Now, what we've got here is a minibus. Now, so you guys get in a, what, a blank e-transit cargo, and what do you do to it to take it to this stage here as a pretty much finished minibus? Yeah, that's right. Like a blind shell, as we would call it. It's got no glass. It's just total panel van. We strip the vehicle out inside, obviously, take the bulkhead out. We then um, cut the holes in the side, paint the edges, rust proof it all, bond the glass on. And we've got a very unique product where we, what we call our smart floor system, where we bond a tracking rail system. So we're not drilling holes through, which you don't want to do because of batteries underneath, right. obviously. And then we obviously put the seating into the rail system. In this particular vehicle, we've put 10 in the back, making this vehicle a 12 seater. New Zealand's first 12 seater on the market in an EV. Now, what's the advantage of using, doing something like this, taking a blank shell and building it out as a minibus as opposed to, now there are vans out there that come in as a minibus as such. Does this just fit better with New Zealand's passenger vehicle rules? Why would you do that rather than bring something to the factory? It's a very good question, Richard. And it's been from day dot that New Zealand is quite a unique place. Our rules for transport are very different to what's in other countries. So setting them up to the specs for passenger service compliance running on a COF for tourism operators, those type of people who get around and show our lovely New Zealand to these visitors that come in. Um, they have a set of rules that they have to comply with with aisle measurements and whatnot. So there's a lot of technical aspect that goes into it, which is hard to get from overseas because they just want to do cookie cutter. Um, there is a place for them in the market, but obviously getting a blind van, you can configure it how you want it. You can spec it up. You can put your own unique touch into it and it, it really fits the Kiwi way of having identity. Now you mentioned that you, with the electric vehicle particularly, you're trying to keep weight down and also you don't want to put a bolt through the floor because there's a battery down there. Uh, what a, Have you found what kind of impact putting that system into the van has had on the range? I mean, these things here, I think real world in my experience, 250k, maybe a little bit more. What have you guys found once you put the system in and, and, and it's gotten into use that it's doing? Yeah, it's a good question. Obviously it's very early days and we're doing a lot of monitoring at the moment. But because of what we're doing with the lightweight, say traditional ways of putting in seat mounting anchorages into the vehicle, we're looking at around about 60% lighter on the total overall. But as far as mileage goes, I think we are going to be not too far off what manufacturers spec out wow. because the vehicle was obviously designed to do and carry a load. Yeah. And we're working within the parameters of what it's designed to do. Now, the Transits have that fantastic power system in the back of the van. Have any of your minibus uh, customers or even some of your commercial com customers found a use for that yet? Oh, yeah. No, that's a, it's a great little thing for charging your laptop or if you want to take a drinks fridge or something like that. And, of course, our tourism operators, they love to be able to give customers a good experience and having the odd little beverage in the back is, <laughs> is quite a, <laughs> a perk. Now, uh, what's the cost? I mean, what's, what kind of costs are fit up with this adding? And I know it's probably varies between user onto one of these vans. Typically speaking, you'd be looking around about 40000 for the complete package. And then obviously you've got your van on top. Now, some people might say that I think that kind of adds up, I guess, to about $130,000 for a van. Sounds a lot. But from what I understand, you guys are selling, between you and Ford, have sold a lot of these with this fit out. How many are you up to now? Well, we've produced the first 13. But there's rolling on, obviously the boats are coming down to New Zealand with, with the, um, the volume coming in now. And I think there's around about 111 on the ground Wow, that we need to push through. So very exciting time. 
on an average at Auto Transform here across the company, we, we do around about 125 vehicles a month. Um, that's across all vehicles. We've got p capacity here to push through around about 30 units a month of this. Fantastic. Currently, so. And who's using these? I and mean, who are the first customers for these uh, vehicles, if you can tell us? So, yeah, really interesting guys, early adopters, yeah. um, healthcare organisations, taking the, our elderly folk from the rest care, out shopping, getting around, having a day at the park, doing something around the town. And we also have rental car operators and sort of airport pickup drop off. So they're doing a circuit. Mm -hmm. It's got really interesting feedback coming out of that because it's going to be t 24 hours virtually yeah. around the clock. I think, I think the rest of one's interesting because I know from my experience having electric vehicles, one of the great things we found with having a, with having a, a baby is you can have the air conditioning running when you're stationary without having some horrible diesel motor running. Uh, so that must be a real advantage for them too. Keep, you got to keep the van cold basically well, uh, or warm as the case may be while their guests are doing things or loading. Absolutely. And also, you know, no fumes. A lot nicer to get around and as you're hopping in and out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for telling us about this vehicle. It's a really, really great looking fit out. We're going to go and uh, have a chat to uh, someone else with a little more details about Ford's electric product. <laughs> Right, so now I'm talking to Simon Rutherford, the Managing Director of Ford New Zealand. Thanks for joining us, Simon. Pleasure. Now, I'm going to ask the same question I asked Daniel, and I, and I posed it myself at the start of the video. Vans really are New Zealand's workhorse, aren't they? Not utes. I know you sell a lot of utes, but it's the vans that really do the tough work. Feel cool? Yeah, I think so. And um, what we're seeing with, with Transit is that uh, unfortunately, we've had a shortage of supply, as everybody knows, over the last couple of years. We've rectified that now, and we're looking forward to bringing our new range out for everybody so they really see what we can offer in the van space. Mm -hmm. And you do have a lot more coming. I mean, this is the e-transit, but if I've gotten my numbers right over the next couple of years, we're going to see three other sizes of electric van coming from Ford. Is that correct? Yeah, so basically what we want to do is have a little, um, a medium, and a large um, and offer that for both van configurations and uh, and passengers. Um, we'll start with the, the small van, which will be the, the Tornio van, um, and that will be also available as, a, as the Tornio Courier. So, um, and that will be um, just a five-seater uh, in that configuration. Then we're going to have pretty much the all-new, what we call 710 Transit, which is the all-new custom, which is um, going to be available um, in both diesel and BEV. Uh, and we're excited about that because that's uh, a ground up development for a BEV platform as well, which, uh, which Cargo wasn't. And then we'll have Big, which is what we're sitting in there. Yes. So. Now, I think people see a van and just see a van, but there's a, a whole lot more to it than that. I mean, obviously, we've just spoken about the smaller vans. You get those in passenger or, uh, or uh, cargo configurations as such. But you must work with a lot of partners on projects like this where you're doing more interesting fit outs kind of really being able to pull out, uh, fit out these vehicles to what people's, need, what people's needs are. Yeah, absolutely. And we, um, we look to get better at that, right? Because we think there's a, a big opportunity to serve customers better in that space. Um, we know it's big business for our team in Europe um, with their SVO operations. Uh, they do also qualified vehicle modifications in Europe. Uh, and really what that's trying to do is present more of a one-stop shop to customers uh, with configurations that work for them and, and working uh, with Auto Transform here is a, is a great example of that to take uh, take a factory product but convert it to what was a very specific need for some uh, some customers. So. Now do you think with electrification we could actually see some people who may traditionally drive uh, SUVs or utes or station wagons actually shifting over to that that van market particularly if we talk about the electric curry with the five seats. I mean that to me is a small family or, or business passenger vehicle makes a lot more sense than some of the stuff that's out there now and maybe if you might take another look at that or rethink what their needs are with electrification being available. I think so um, you know you you've got the capability and functionality that um, and you haven't got the compromise of perhaps the fuel economy or the costs that you might have had before so as people adopt uh, electrified products and um, BEVs in particular I think they will see the benefit of it. And you think, we call it a small transit, but you can still get a Euro Pallet in the back of it. And I think lifestyle-wise, you can get your mountain bikes and everything else for the family in um, and your five seats, and you know, they'll definitely look at it. So, so maybe current Escape customers could be looking at a, a courier or a custom with a passenger fit out in the future. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, personally, I think one of the best vehicles for any family on the road at the moment, it's a bit of a weird one, is the, 
is the is the Ford Custom Sport. I think that's a brilliant vehicle. I'd love to see that once it's electrified and uh, and people are uh, thinking differently than just having a Ute. Not there's anything wrong with having a Ute. I mean, you guys do sell a lot of those. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, when we look at what the Ford range is going forward, we're seeing in Europe and overseas they are dropping a lot of the passenger car models. I mean, how far away are we from Ford in New Zealand essentially being Utes, vans, and Mustangs? Is that kind of where the mix is going to go in the future? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say so. What we're trying to do is we recognize the need to offer a full, full portfolio of vehicles. Um, as we transition through uh, hybrid and into full BAVs, um, we'll play to our strengths as well. So uh, we know that we offer strong uh, commercial products that are very capable. What we need to do is make sure that as we go through that transition, we're we're adding to and not taking away any of those capabilities because customers still want to need the same things. Um, and we'll look at, you know, how customers uh, shift, just like we were talking about. We think there will be a shift in some cases. So um, right now we're committed to supporting of our products, um, but obviously we'll, we'll move uh, over time away from hybrid into plug in hybrid in some cases and to BEV as our portfolios grow. And of course, I guess the big thing in the last question is, what does that mean for Ranger in the longer term? Are we going to see an electrified Ranger? It's pretty much New Zealand's most popular vehicle at the moment. Yeah. What's the electric future for Ranger or in the broader pickup market, I guess? Yeah. I mean, I think there's obviously news out there already about some, you know, what are the mild hybrids that might be coming for other brands and things. Uh, our focus, as you know, from Next Gen uh, Ranger was uh, we'd, we'd always built the platform with a plan for electrification. Uh, we need to make sure that, as I was just saying, that we deliver exactly what people want. It needs to be not, uh, it, it needs to be as good as um, our current um, current Ranger in, in uh, diesel, uh, if not better, right? So um, that's what we're focused on, and we'll be able to share more news uh, in due course. F-150 Lightning, any chance? Oh, I'd love to have it, yeah. Um, I, you know... Obviously, further down the track, um, we've got a number of opportunities in that space. We also have our facility that we just opened in, in Melbourne uh, to convert, uh, you know, left-hand drive to right-hand drive. So can't commit to anything, but certainly it would be on our, on our horizon as something we would look at. So if 150 Lightning converted to right-hand drive is being considered for New Zealand through Melbourne? Uh, not at this stage. It's something that we, uh, we haven't got to that stage, but it's, it's an idea. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Right. So that's it for our quick look around the e-transit here at Auto Transform. I think it's a really cool fit out and it's great to see what can be done with vans and what's coming from brands like Ford in these spaces that aren't just our traditional kind of vehicle combinations. Hopefully you'll consider something different the next time you're shopping for a vehicle. So don't forget to like and subscribe down the bottom for more from YouTube or visit evsandbeyond.co.nz for more great content.